How would you like to leverage the latest technology for worship so you can increase excellence, eliminate distractions, and engage your congregation online? For too many worship ministries, technology is a frustrating obstacle. Maybe you feel like it's all too confusing, like you need an advanced degree in audio engineering or computer science in order to figure it all out. Or maybe your church is looking to upgrade audio, visual, and live streaming gear, but you don't know where to begin. But the truth is, we live in the most exciting time in history to be a worship ministry leader. Never before have our tools been so accessible and impactful. The size of your church is irrelevant. And sadly, too many churches waste hundreds of thousands of donated dollars on unnecessary tech. And most of the time, they don't have anyone trained or qualified to actually run all the gear. But there's a much better way to build worship tech infrastructure at a fraction of the cost, and you can achieve much better results. When you properly leverage technology as a worship leader, pastor, or tech team leader, your congregation can engage in worship without distractions. You can communicate the message of the gospel with greater clarity, and finally, you'll be able to unleash your team's creative potential. In this video, I'll give you a roadmap for building worship tech infrastructure at your church. By the end of this training, you'll know the exact tools and strategies your worship ministry needs to look and sound its best, both in person and online. But why should you bother listening to me, a random guy on the internet? Great question. If we haven't met yet, my name is Jake Goslin. I'm the founder of Churchfront. We are an online education and media platform for local church worship ministries. I'm a worship leader myself. I've been leading since I was a junior in high school, and now I lead worship at Mission Lakewood Church. We're a small, young church that launched about two and a half years ago. At first, we met in a local high school until the pandemic forced us to find a new location, so now we meet every Sunday at a local chapel. I did get my bachelor's in music and religion and my master of divinity from Denver Seminary. I learned a lot about music theory and the Bible and theology in higher education but higher education had little to offer in the realm of practical ministry skills. I attended the School of Hard Knocks for the majority of my worship tech knowledge. I've made just about every mistake in the book regarding audio, lighting, and live streaming. A few years ago, I started sharing my favorite tools and strategies on my YouTube channel, which now has over 100,000 subscribers. I've created in-depth videos touring churches like Bethel Church, Red Rocks Church, and Life Church. My superpower is demystifying technology for small to mid-sized church worship ministries. A couple of years ago, we launched Worship Ministry School. It's our education platform at Churchfront. Our Worship Accelerator program has helped hundreds of worship leaders, tech team leaders, and pastors build the right tech setups for their church. I'm right there with you. I know what it's like leading worship at a small to mid-sized church when you have big dreams and limited resources. That's why I'm so excited to share with you this roadmap to guide you on the journey of leveraging tech for worship ministry. So let's dive in. We are going to cover the five pillars you need to build a robust tech infrastructure for in-person and online gatherings. I'm going to list these pillars in sequential order, and I highly encourage you to follow this order to achieve the best results. For each of these pillars, I'm gonna unpack the most common shifts that churches need to make in order to build a robust worship tech system. Pillar number one, audio. Audio plays a foundational role in your worship tech infrastructure. For most churches, the vital shift to make in this area is to transition from analog to digital audio. Consider the massive difference between using an outdated landline telephone and a modern day smartphone. Digital technology has transformed every aspect of our everyday life, and it's the same with audio technology. To make this transition from analog to digital, you need to install a digital mixing console and a digital stage box. Digital mixers have come a long way over the past 10 years. They are more affordable and more powerful than ever. You no longer need massive racks of analog gear to create the same professional sound you hear on your favorite albums. All of that processing comes inside the digital mixing console's computer. 
A digital stage box gives you more options to route audio to and from your stage and speakers. The stage box will also make it much easier to implement in-ear monitoring, which brings us to the next shift. You need to get rid of floor wedge monitors and transition to in-ear monitoring. In-ear monitors dramatically reduce stage volume, making it easier to achieve a better mix for your in-person congregation and your online congregation. In-ear monitors also allow your worship band to implement a click in backing tracks to keep them playing in time and sounding full. The final shift you need to make in the area of audio is to leverage digital audio networking. Now I know that sounds technical and a bit daunting, but hear me out. Digital audio networking protocols like Dante allow you to send multiple channels of audio from one device to another device over a simple ethernet network. For example, in my worship ministry, we run our backing tracks and our keyboard sounds from Ableton Live. We need six channels of audio sent from Ableton to our mixing console. Instead of using a cumbersome audio interface, we only need a USB to ethernet adapter to send the signal across the network. Digital audio networking also plays a vital role in mixing audio for our online service. And we'll talk more about that setup later in this video. But to sum up its benefits, digital audio networking gives you massive flexibility with how you route audio from your stage to your mixing console and other computers you have in your tech infrastructure. When you implement these shifts in the audio setup at your church, you will be well on your way to achieving the best sound possible for both in-person and online services. If you do not make these shifts, your mixes will always sound subpar, you'll have a cluttered setup, and you won't have the foundation you need to send high quality audio online. Check out a story from one of our students, Jana, who installed a digital mixing system with our team's help. Keep in mind, she had zero prior experience or knowledge with these type of tools. So I jumped aboard and grew by leaps and bounds. And Luke was so patient with me. I did not know any vocabulary or liked so much understanding in the area of technology. But thankfully the videos just kind of lead you step by step through the process. And so now we're at the point where we have upgraded our soundboard to the X32 digital, uh, the Behringer and we've added a computer and we're learning how to use Ableton and <clears throat> grow and excellence as a ministry. And it's so exciting to, uh, to see things happen and see things change. I've noticed a change in my, uh, my worship team and, and their excitement and, and the vision that's ahead for us as a ministry. Now let's move on to pillar number two for your worship tech infrastructure, visuals. So far, we've addressed how to make your worship gatherings sonically pleasing for your congregation with the right audio tools. But now we'll focus on the fundamental shifts you must make as it pertains to the visual side of things. Now that all churches are coming online with their services, it's crucial to ensure that you have adequate lighting. Lighting is a bit more forgiving for your in-person audience, but inadequate lighting will be a massive distraction for your online viewers. Overall, you need to have the mindset that your church's worship space is not merely a live venue, but it's also a video production studio. And to be a great studio, you need to have adequate lighting. My quickest tip here is to use ellipsoidal spotlights to light the front of your subjects on stage. Two to four of these fixtures are often sufficient for most small to mid-sized church stages. These fixtures give you a lot of control over your beam of light, preventing light from spilling onto projector screens or other areas of the stage that you don't want it. These fixtures also provide adequate light on the front of your subjects, like pastors and worship leaders, so that they're gonna come across vibrant and clear through your cameras. Use colored LED lights behind and beside your subjects to cast color on the stage and to affect the overall mood. If you're wanting your lights to really pop, then you're gonna wanna implement haze. My favorite way to control lights is with DMX control software that runs on a computer. There's no need to use a dedicated lighting console. The other important piece of visual infrastructure at your church is presentation software and projection screens. 
Make sure you choose a presentation software that allows you to output multiple screens to various destinations, such as your main projector for the congregation, stage display for your band, and lower third lyrics for your live stream. Avoid using software like PowerPoint, Keynote, and Google Slides. They are extremely limited and inefficient for worship presentation needs. I know something as simple as presentation software doesn't sound like a big deal, but check out how it impacted Troy's worship ministry. Since that time, we, we started with, um, we did have a MacBook Pro, we did have ProPresenter, we did have a Behringer X32, but none of that was being used um, the way it should be and could be used. In fact, ProPresenter, we, we had bought, but we, we just can't get over the hump of of using ProPresenter in worship, so we've been using Kino. Uh, so at least we're using the MacBook Pro, but really not, again, not to um, the potential that it could be. Being able to take ProPresenter to that next level and uh, incorporating um, slides that were not only pleasing to look at, but were also just automatic. There's never, there's never a stutter. There's never a, a, a hint of oh, you know, where's the words for this next, you know, and, and you're waiting for the words to show up while you're singing. It's like they're they're on point, they're on time. Um, and for us as musicians, we have a confidence monitor. So again, our, our lyrics are always right there. We don't have to worry about um, looking at sheet music or anything like that. We're using a confidence monitor. That it helps us exactly um, as it's described, have confidence and, and we have the, the lyrics in front of us and it's still important to know your music and stuff like that. But, uh, so all of that is, uh, is thanks to um, being able to use MIDI cues and things like that in Ableton Live and automate stuff. Um, I would not have been able to do any of that if it wasn't for um, the lessons that Jake has created. For more visually compelling worship gatherings, make sure you install the right fixtures, leverage DMX control software, and also install the proper presentation solutions. If you don't, people will be more likely to check out during the services. They'll pull out their phone to browse social media, or if they're watching online, they'll simply move on to a different website. So that's pillar number two, visuals. Now let's move on to the third pillar for robust worship tech infrastructure, and that pillar is automation. When it comes to worship tech, the biggest game changer you'll encounter is automation. It's the most powerful tool that small to mid-sized churches can leverage and it allows you to achieve a high level of excellence without needing a large tech team. Imagine this, imagine never having distractions caused by missed lyric or lighting cues. Imagine being able to change camera angles with your video switcher without pressing any buttons. Imagine the creativity it will unleash for you as the worship or tech leader to design all of your lyric, lighting, and video cues ahead of time and to have full confidence that they will all happen at the proper time during the service. Well, this is all made possible with automation. Here's how you implement it. First, you need to start using a click in tracks for your worship band. My favorite tool to do this is Ableton Live. It's a powerful software that allows you to craft how your service will look and feel ahead of time. It can send MIDI commands to your lighting presentation and other production software. Next, you'll want to set up a MIDI network so you can send MIDI cues over a wireless or hardwired connection. There are multiple ways to accomplish this, all of which we cover in our Accelerator program. Finally, each and every week, you'll set aside some time to program your songs and your cues. Then when Sunday morning arrives, you simply press play in Ableton, your band will play to the click and tracks, and all of the production cues will sync up perfectly. Here's what the setup looks like at my church. So what you're seeing in this video is Ableton Live queuing ProPresenter for our slides and our lower thirds lyrics on the live stream. And then it's also queuing our ATEM control software to cut video angles. In this type of setup, we're also able to queue lights when we want to. And to prove to you that any worship leader can build this type of system, check out Abe's story. Hi, I'm Abraham Karam, and I'm a worship leader at Coker UMC for the Contemporary and Spanish Services in San Antonio, Texas. Now, before joining Worship Leader School, I knew about Ableton, I knew about multi-tracks, but that's it. I didn't know how to implement them in a service. In fact, I even thought that it could possibly 
in a way take away from the worship experience. I had friends that used them and taught me a couple of things here and there, but it was definitely a different language for me. Now, after learning about Jake and Churchfront and Worship Leader School, the goal went from just playing the multi-tracks to actually automating Pro Presenter and Lights using Ableton. Again, I would never see myself do something like this. I thought it was a very different language. But like I said, I started in January and by that third week, I created a worship set list. In February, I connected to Pro Presenter and by March we were already using Ableton to automate the lyrics and the lights. I really didn't think I was going to be able to learn this, but now I look forward to setting up the worship set list every week, Pro Presenter, and I can easily control the lights, which really helps with transitions in the service. If you make this critical shift in your tech setup and leverage automation, you'll no longer deal with the frustration of missed lyric, lighting, or video cues. Your congregation won't have to deal with distractions in worship. And finally, you'll have so much more creativity as a worship ministry leader as the size of your team will no longer limit you. So let's move on to the fourth pillar of your worship tech setup, and that is the broadcast system. It's no longer optional for churches to have a high quality and reliable live streaming system. Your congregation must have the option to experience worship both in person and online. But diving into the world of live streaming and broadcast gear can get overwhelming. And I see churches make mistakes in this area all the time. My first piece of advice is this. Before investing heavily into your church's broadcast system, make sure you implement everything I talked about with the first three pillars in this training. The quality of your church's live stream will only be as strong as your audio, visual, and automation infrastructure. Think of your worship ministry like an iceberg. Everything the congregation sees and experiences, whether it's in person or online, is above the surface at the tip of the iceberg. Underneath the surface is everything you need to focus on as a worship ministry leader. When it comes to technology, you must have a strong foundation of audio, visuals, and automation to ensure that you can send a quality product online. You could have a $10,000 cinema camera, but with poor lighting, it's still going to look awful. You could also have fantastic video quality, but with poor audio capture and mixing and musicianship, it's going to sound awful and it's gonna be a distraction. All of these elements must work together to broadcast high quality content to your online viewers. If your church is serious about building a robust and high quality streaming setup, here are the crucial elements you will need. First, you're gonna to wanna to invest into quality cameras and lenses. I recommend mirrorless cameras like the Panasonic GH5 or entry-level cinema cameras like Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Cameras or the Canon C200. Next, you'll want dedicated hardware for video switching, recording, and encoding. Sure, you could run streaming software on a computer to accomplish these tasks, but there are a few reasons why I think that's a bad idea. First, Streaming software is very intensive on your computer's processor, meaning there's a higher chance of the application failing and you end up losing your stream. Second, when you have dedicated hardware for video switching, recording, and encoding, you'll be able to capture and stream higher quality audio and video. Third, having a dedicated hardware setup increases your broadcast system's resilience if one of the pieces were to glitch or fail. Blackmagic Design makes a ton of fantastic and affordable gear for church live streaming. My favorite tools include the ATEM switchers, the HyperDeck Studio Mini for recording, and the Smart Video Hub for routing audio feeds to and from the appropriate destination. My favorite streaming encoder and software are by a company called Resi. They make hardware encoders and provide a multi-streaming service which allows you to send your stream to multiple social platforms and your church's website simultaneously. The final major shift you need to make with your live streaming setup is to mix audio separately from the house mix that you have in your live worship space. 
My favorite strategy for this is using a digital audio workstation or DAW like Ableton Live. Do not purchase a second mixing console for your live stream mix. Instead, you're gonna to wanna to leverage a DAW because it allows you to use more plugins and processing to properly master your audio for an online audience. Mixing with a DAW is the same strategy used at larger churches like Bethel and Life Church. The best part is that this approach can scale down to even small churches like mine because all you need is a few hundred dollars worth of software and a laptop to run that software. A few months ago, a worship leader, Jono, joined our Worship Accelerator program because his church tasked him with building a complete live streaming and church online system. Within about a month, we helped him implement a complete broadcast video and audio solution for his church. And as his Facebook post says, they're rolling on Sundays. Jono had zero experience building this type of system before working with us. As I already mentioned, building a robust broadcast system is no longer optional for local churches. It's now just as important as having a building where your congregation can meet. But fortunately, video broadcast gear has become incredibly affordable over the past decade, and all you need is a proven strategy to build the right system for your church. The first four pillars we covered in this training focused on the best gear and software tools for worship. But there's one more crucial pillar, and that's your team. As much as I'm an advocate for automation, you still can't get around the need to have trained volunteers who know how to run sound, presentation, lighting, and broadcast tools. If you don't train your team members, you can never take a week off without worrying about everything falling apart as the worship ministry leader. If you don't build a team, there will be gifted church members who can't contribute to worship ministry. That's why in our Accelerator program, we ensure that every ministry that signs up gets team member access. We want worship and tech leaders to empower their volunteers to learn these various tools. Not only will they be able to execute tasks on Sunday morning, but they can actually help you innovate and improve your systems. Don't lose sight of the importance of building your team as you develop your worship tech system. Those are the five pillars for worship tech, and by now, you've heard multiple stories of worship ministry leaders who have implemented these strategies successfully. They have fewer to no distractions in worship. They can be more creative with production elements like lyrics, lights, and video switching without needing 10 production volunteers every Sunday. They're more satisfied with the quality of their live stream. And most importantly, they curate life-changing worship experiences where their congregation can hear, see, and experience the Word of God. To implement these tools and strategies as quickly as the worship leaders you heard from in this video, you need a proven system. Sure, you could learn things the hard and slow way. Maybe eventually you'll crack the code, but chances are higher that you'll end up wasting a ton of time and your church's resources on the wrong gear. Or even if you purchase the right gear, you won't know how to use it most efficiently and effectively. The vast majority of churches go that route. And that's why the vast majority of churches waste a ton of time and money on technology only to achieve mediocre results. If you don't want mediocre results for your worship ministry, and if you wanna save time and money, you could try the alternative route. Over the next few weeks and months, you could implement a system to take your ministry to the next level in record time. By now, you're probably wondering how to go about doing this. Today we covered a general roadmap of the five pillars of worship tech. But what exactly does it look like to apply that to your unique ministry? My team has the perfect program for you in your worship ministry if you're looking to build a digital sound system, create engaging visuals, implement automation, broadcast professional audio and video, and finally, build a team to support this strong system. We are looking for more passionate and dedicated worship ministry leaders who we can help achieve these results. We work with primarily three types of clients. Worship ministry leaders at churches who are willing to invest in the right technology to get the job done. Worship ministry leaders who want to develop mastery with audio, visual, automation, and broadcast tools without any prior knowledge or experience in these areas. And then third, worship ministry leaders who want to stream professional video and audio for their online viewers. 
we will help you map out a plan for implementing and mastering the right tech for your specific worship ministry. Our free strategy session lasts around 30 minutes, and you'll be speaking with one of our coaches who will help you develop a customized plan to take your ministry to the next level. Who is this for? Well, it's for worship leaders, it's for worship tech team leaders, it's for pastors, church leaders who want to maximize their worship team's potential by implementing the right tools and strategy, it's for churches who are willing to invest in their worship ministry, and it's for self-motivated church leaders who take action and they're eager to follow a proven plan. Who is this not for? It's not for church leaders who think technology is evil. It's not for church leaders who want to do everything as cheap as possible. It's not for church leaders who are just in information gathering mode and are not prepared to take action or get results. And finally, it's not for anyone who's not serious about leveraging technology to help you lead excellent and engaging worship. Knowing whether or not you're a good fit is crucial because we like to get all of our clients' results and we like to work with them for the long term. We want to get worship ministry leaders' results as quickly as possible. And the truth is, there are some churches we cannot help. And if that's the case, our coach will be 100% upfront with you and suggest an alternative. The first step is to complete an application for a private strategy session. The application is necessary to determine two things. First, we want to ensure that our team and our program is the best way to help you achieve these results for your worship ministry. Second, we want to ensure that you are ready to step up, commit, take action, and do the required work to generate the results. And then at the end of the call, one of two things will happen. You'll either be a fit and the coach will extend an invitation to work with our team as one of our clients, or if it's not a good fit, that's okay too, and there are no hard feelings or obligations. Either way, you will receive an insanely valuable strategy session, and you're gonna walk away with newfound clarity as to where you are right now and what's holding you back from achieving the results that you want. All of that along with the exact next steps necessary for you to take action and break through barriers in your ministry. So go ahead and complete your application now and we will see if we're a good fit for doing ministry together. We found that the leaders who can make decisions and act quickly are the most likely to get results and most likely to become our best clients and crush it together for years to come. So if you feel like this is right for you, go ahead and apply right now to see if you qualify and then go ahead and follow the instructions on the next page. Our team looks forward to connecting with you soon.